Hey guys, this is Ryan Smith. I'm just starting a new project here in the UDK and I just wanted to uh, walk you through uh, the ways I go about setting up uh, my master material for uh, the scene and like uh, it's, it's pretty much what I'm going to be using uh, as a base for the rest of the artwork that I create in this. So uh, an advantage of this is that if I make this master material and I give it all the functionality that I anticipate that most of my props are going to be using, I don't have to keep creating more and more materials to use. I can instead just make one and instance it around a bit. So uh, in order to do that, you need to have default textures and stuff like that. And I just wanted to do it properly. So I'm just going to take a couple minutes here and just kind of I'll show you my workflow on how to create such a such a material. So what I'm going to do first is I have a, a 64 by 64 map here and I'm going to go ahead and open up my layers tab and I'm just going to give this a couple basic uh, layers and the, the reason we need to do this is we need to have something that's uh, pure gray uh, that'll represent uh, things like uh, diffuse, bump offset, things like that. And in another layer, we need to give it uh, uh, a normal map color. So we'll do 255, 255, or sorry, 128, 128, and 255, and that, that'll give us that flat normal color. So uh, I'm just going to save this out as in my labyrinth of folders here. Let's do we'll do maps and we'll just call this one uh, normal or just normal map base and we'll save it as Targa and we'll save this one as we'll call this one diffuse base and we'll save that one out and we'll make one more and this will be our grayscale one it'll be the same as gray and you'll see why I'm doing this in just a couple seconds but We'll call this uh, gray base. And now we have all our maps. So I'm going to minimize Photoshop and all my other crap here. And we'll start to import this stuff. So right here I have a package called the pit and I have my first couple, my first prop and uh, texture loaded in here. So I'm just going to go to uh, the texture folder and I'll import the maps that we just made. And the reason we have to import these like we're actually importing textures is because if in the material you just uh, imported a gray map for the normal uh, and use that as the base, it wouldn't show up properly. It, it'll, uh, it'll make the material look a little bit weird and we just want everything to look proper. So, I mean, it's not something that you really have to do if you don't want to, like by all means, you can go ahead and use, um, you can go ahead and use your normal map, uh, this pillar normal map, it's your base normal map, but it might confuse you uh, when differentiating between what the master is and what all the uh, other instance constants are. I just want a good visual representation of, of what it's going to be and uh, I want it to distinguish itself from the rest of the instances. So that's really the only reason I'm doing this. So for a normal map we'll just go compression normal map, no alpha and we'll load that in and for the diffuse we'll just call it default compression no alpha and for the gray base we'll do grayscale and that should represent everything that we're going to be using alright so now we have all of our maps and we can go ahead and create our master material so I'm going to right click go to new material and 
And so we'll group it in materials and we'll call it material underscore master. Or we'll actually we'll call it prop master. Hit OK and that should open up the material box. Shrink this up so it fits in capture space. And now we can start editing our material and giving it some global parameters that we're going to be using for all of our props. So I'm going to go back into my content browser and I'll just minimize this just a little bit and I'll bring in my diffuse base by selecting it over here and I'm just holding T and clicking over here. And I'll do the same for my gray base and again for my normal map base. And we'll just go ahead and plug these in into the appropriate slots. So um, I'm going to right click and I'm going to convert this to a parameter because this is uh, this will be our, our main diffuse slot. And we'll call this uh, diffuse and I'll duplicate that and I'll call this one spec and I'll plug that into the specular slot and we have like a little bit of a highlight here going and I'll convert this to a parameter And we'll call this one normal. And we'll plug that in the normal map slot. And that's looking good. And this is the grayscale one, so we'll just leave this go for now. And uh, another thing we could do is duplicate this again, just in case we need an emissive map. We'll call this emissive. And that's not how you spell emissive. And we'll plug this into the emissive slot. We're going to get a little bit of a glow there, but don't worry, we'll fix that in a second. And we'll bring out some scalar parameters. And we'll call this one spec power. And we'll give it a default value of something like 15. And we'll go ahead and plug that into the spec power slot. And we have a diffuse power node that we're not going to worry about. We're not going to worry about opacity for now or any of these other things. These are uh, pretty much the only uh, nodes that we're going to be using texture maps for that I can foresee, but if we need to change that in the future, we could just come into this master material and edit it, and the change will affect all of its children. So that's another reason that we're using, uh, that we create this master material first. So now that we have most of our texture or sample parameters hooked up to our node here, we can start adding some expressions here that give us some options uh, to choose whether or not we want some of this some of these maps uh, so one thing that I like to do is uh, especially for for emissive is I like to use static switch parameters and what a static switch parameter does is it'll it'll turn that node off pretty much so if I were to plug our emissive map into a static switch parameter and plug that back into the emissive slot Notice how it goes away in our little preview window here. That's because right now the default value is left unchecked. And when it's unchecked, it's going to output whatever is going in the slot B. And right now nothing is going into slot B, therefore nothing is going into the emissive slot. And that's exactly what we want. We want to have a static switch parameter, and we'll call it 